Hi, I'm Rocky Hulse. Welcome back to another Truth Outreach program. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad that we're here. This uh, lovely lady on my right is my beautiful wife, Helen. And Welcome. we're the founding directors of Mormon Missions Midwest Outreach. Welcome back to another Truth Outreach program. We're very happy that you're tuning in, and we hope you enjoy this program. And, and we're so thankful that uh, you do tune in and watch us weekly. And uh, uh, we appreciate it very much. And remember, the Truth Outreach is a program that compares uh, the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or the Mormons, uh, with Christianity. And of course, the baseline that we use for doing those comparisons is the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, Basic Instruction Before Leaving Earth. Now, those of you that tune in and watch this regularly know that we use a couple of quotes to begin our programs, which we think legitimizes what we do here. The first quote is from Brigham Young. And Brigham Young said... I say to the whole world, receive the truth no matter who presents it to you. Take up the Bible, compare the religion of the Latter-day Saints with it, and see if it will stand the test. Now his first counselor's name was George A. Smith, and he said this, If a faith will not bear to be investigated, if its preachers and professors are afraid to have it examined, their foundation must be very weak. So we believe that those two quotes from Brigham Young and his first counselor, which are the two highest positions in the Mormon church, the prophet and his first counselor, gives us license or legitimizes us to look into and to investigate. And that's what we, we're doing. That's what every program does. And today, the title of today's program is called Salt Lake is Scam Central. Now, what is a scam? Well, Webster's Dictionary defines scam as this. It's slang. It's a slang term, which means uh, a swindle. Now, we've all seen those commercials on TV that the, that the Mormon church has on. And, you know, those commercials give the air or the appearance that the Mormons have it all together. You know, the image that they promote is uh, that they are the, the spiritual giants of, of religions. So how could Salt Lake City, the capital of Utah, which is 75% Mormon, how could it be known as, as the scam central, or as Webster says, swindle central uh, of the world? How could it be scam central of the world, swindle capital of the world, when 75% of Utah is Mormons and, and they have it all together? They are the, the perfect religion. Uh, this is uh, right here is a 1983, uh, it's called the Utah Evangel, see if I can get it skewed to the camera there so you can see a little bit, maybe you'll be able to read it, but it's a 1983, uh, August 1983 Utah Evangel. And on here on the front page, which you saw there, uh, is a, a story that's titled, Utah Scam Loses $200 Million. Now the first four pages, or excuse me, the first four paragraphs, uh, of that article on there, read like this. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. First four paragraphs says, In the past two years, Utah has become a haven for con artists. So says the May 8, 1983 Denver Post. Utah's bankruptcy levels have become the highest per capita in the U.S. Many bankruptcies are tied to get-rich-quick schemes. U.S. Attorney Brent Ward says every one of the schemes is intended to take advantage of the trust Mormons have for one another. Now, you may say, well, well uh, hey, Rocky, that was 20 years ago. You know, that was, that was 1983. So, you know, times were different back then. And, you know, a lot of things have changed since then. Uh, well, that's true. Uh, a lot of things have. But, you know, folks, the more things change, uh, the more they remain the same. Uh, or get worse, maybe. In the Friday, uh, January 17th, 2003, Deseret News, and I've got a copy uh, here. We just printed it off of the off of the internet. But this was uh, this uh, article was printed in the Friday, January 17th, 2003, Deseret News. And that's the newspaper. It's, it's a newspaper, but it's Mormon owned in right. Salt Lake City. Right. I think it's important to. To mention that, that oh, the sure. Desert that's, News, that's a Mormon-owned that's newspaper them. in Salt Lake City. Exactly. Now we have the following article, and I'm going to put that up on the screen for you. It says that you know the, the title of the article is Big Scams Fleece LDS Flocks. 
Federal investigators unveiled today a series of investment schemes that allegedly preyed primarily on members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and may end up bilking church members out of nearly a hundred million dollars. Now this article goes on to say, investment fraud isn't unique to Utah, but what is unique is the trust people in Utah normally have with each other because of religious affiliation. U.S. Attorney Paul Warner said, one inescapable observation of the prosecutors and FBI agents invest investigating these frauds is the overwhelming number of victims whose first encounter with the fraudulent solicitor is at church or is at a church or religious event, specifically the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Warner said in a prepared statement. Now, um, now this article that we just read, you know, Helen, is, is not... Uh, people preying on the poor Mormons. It's Mormons ripping off other Mormons. Right. And, uh, you know, this article points this, this very fact out. I'm going to show you that. This is right out of this article. It says the very same thing that Helen and I just talked about. Scams designed to take advantage of the LDS faithful are nothing new in Utah. In 1989, the Council for Better Business Bureaus released a report that said approximately 10,000 Utah investors lost an estimated $215 million in the 1980s. Many schemes were promoted within the LDS congregations and involved false claims of connections to the LDS hierarchy. Now, you know, so, so what's happening is, you know, these, these Mormons are going in there and saying, oh, well, you know, even the prophet or the apostles or church leadership approves of this thing. And, 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 and then they draw, they're pulling people in. Oh, well, well you know, if, if church leadership is involved, in it, this must be a really good investment. Right. And they're just sucking these people in, and then they're ripping them off. And it's atrocious. Well, I'm, I'm not quite sure where you're going here right now with this, but perhaps um, you can remember back when uh, uh, I was, had first become a Christian and you were still a Mormon, your mom traveled all the way from Phoenix um, to Virginia to sell us um, into one of these schemes, one of, scheme. one of these pyramid yeah. schemes that had been presented to her through the church. And she was all excited about it and about how rich her and Rocky's father were going to become and, and that Rocky and I could become very rich and all we had to do was take our money and invest it in this thing too. And me be, being a new baby Christian, I didn't want anything to do with it. He wanted everything to do with it, but I praise God we didn't. We did not. We didn't take that we leap. We didn't take that that leap, and we yeah. didn't we didn't do that. And so, so what happened was what? My dad pulled a bunch of money out of his retirement, plucked plopped it into this thing, and the whole thing went belly up. And so my dad ended up having to work an extra five or six years. He had to work till he was seventy, over seventy, seventy one, seventy two, before he could retire because. He had to go back into the retirement system. He worked for the state of Arizona and and build his retirement back up the money that he pulled they out. They lost their life into savings. That scheme. Exactly. They lost their life savings yep. because of right out of the ward that they belonged yep. to. Yep, big exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, we we started out this uh, show today with a quote from a 1983, and that was this Utah Evangel paper. Uh, the last slide that I just did those quotes from uh, from the Council of the Better Business Bureaus was a quote from 1989, but it was quoted in that, in that January 2003 article in the Deseret News out of Salt Lake. So, folks, this whole thing is not just a simple one-time little deal that happened, you know, one time back in 1983 or something. Uh, it's, it's much, much uh, deeper than that. Uh, the Watchman Expositor reported the stigma of Utah as early as 1969. I'm going to put that up for you on the screen now. As early as 1969, the Wall Street Journal, now this is no floozy paper, we're talking the Wall Street Journal here, called Salt Lake City a locus for shell operations. Now what's, what's a what's shell operation? Okay. You know, that's that thing that you see, you know, where they, the camera sometimes on, on, um, on, on New York streets where they'll show a guy and he's, and he's got these three things there and he does the whoosh, 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 and he's swimming the things around and you're trying to bet under exactly. which one of those shells, you know, the, the prize is the prize is or whatever, and they just and they're, and they're good at what they do, and they and they rip you off, okay? Mm -hmm. And you know, here the Wall Street Journal.
call Salt Lake City the locus for shell operations. Well, that's pretty telling about a people. Three out of four people in Utah are Mormons. It doesn't say much for their character, does it? No. You know, that whole image of Mormonism being that they have everything together and they're such honest people. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not sitting here trying to say every Mormon out there is a, is a rip-off agent no. and are bad people no. out there to rip you off. That's not what I'm saying. What we're trying to do is peel away, you know, that layer, that false image that the Mormon church is the only true church on the face of the earth, and so they have this this inner have, revelation, this inner knowledge. They have a higher knowledge, moral standard this higher, than anybody else. You know, which that is they just, are more honest than anybody right. else. That they are more... They promote this image for all these things exactly. that Helen is saying. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That, that they are above, a notch above, way above... All the rest, all of, the rest of us of Gentiles. Gentiles, you know? exactly. Anyone who's not a Mormon in Mormon lingo, in Mormonese, is a Gentile. So, so they're above, a notch above. They've, they've got it together above us Gentiles who mm -hmm. are who are not Mormons. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just balderdash. Well, it really is. I think that one of the things is, is they, they fall for this stuff because of trust. Well, sure. They, they Oh, well, Brother Jones is telling us about this, and, and because he's an elder in the church. You know, an elder is not like elder in Christianity. Any boy above the age of 19 years old can be ordained to the office of elder. So a congregation, local congregation, could have 100 or 200 elders in it. It's not the elders board that we as Christians refer no. to. You got to speak Mormonese, okay? But, you know, they, they think, oh, well, Brother Jones is an elder, so, you know, he, he holds the Melchizedek priesthood, the, the, the ability to act in the name of God. It must be okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not He's okay. He's driving a bright, shiny new car. and yeah, On your money. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, here's a quote out of the 1974 uh, Utah holiday. This is a magazine in Utah. It says, then in 1974, the infamous stock fraud capital moniker was awarded Salt Lake City. Again, this is on a front page of the Wall Street Journal article of February 25th, 1974. The headline is, Dubious Distinction, Salt Lake City Gains Reputation for Being a Stock Fraud Center. This is the Utah Holiday Magazine, uh, quoting, quoting back, uh, this 1974 distinction awarded by the Wall Street Journal. So, you know, so what we're looking at here is clear back to 1969. Wall Street Journal calls uh, calls uh, Utah or Salt Lake City, uh, city the uh, uh, sh uh, a, a shell game, a locus for the shell game. They they were given the the title of being the stock monitor fraud uh, in 1974 by the by the Wall Street Journal, and then it just keeps right on going. Mm -hmm. And this kind of thing is still going on. Oh, it's going Today, on, yeah. I, I mean, mean the January 2003 article out of the Deseret News says that, that they're the scam swindle central right. of, of the world. Right. So for 34 years, from 1969 until right now, 34 years till 2003, Utah is the swindle capital of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, now, how can, can that be? Well... I mean, Mormons have it all together. By their own scripture, they're the only true church on the face of the earth. All the rest of Christianity is an abomination. And I'm going to put those two, slide, two slides up here. This is right out of Mormon scripture. This is Joseph Smith saying that he received a revelation from God for, and that Jesus Christ is speaking to him, saying these two things. We're going to put it up right now. My object in going to inquire of the Lord was to know which of all the sects was right that I might know which to join. No sooner, therefore, did I get possession of myself as to be able to speak than I asked the personages who stood above me in the light. And, and what he's saying here is, is that God the Father and uh, Jesus Christ are these two personages standing in, in the light. Which of all the sects was right and which I should join? I was answered that I must join none of them, for they were all wrong. And the personage who addressed me said that all their creeds were an abomination in his sight. Now, this is Joseph Smith saying that Jesus is speaking to him. These are Jesus' words. Jesus is saying to Joseph that, that all the Christian creeds are an abomination in his sight, that those professors were all corrupt. They draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They teach for doctrines the commandments of men, having a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Now, Joseph Smith... These are, this is right out of Mormon scripture, 
This is the first vision that the, Joseph Smith goes out in the woods, kneels down and prays and says, I don't know which church to join. And he says, God the Father and Jesus Christ appeared to him. And those two last um, slides I put up on, on the screen for you is direct quote out of Mormon scripture. That's what Joseph Smith says. He says, God the Father and Jesus Christ appeared to him, said that all of Christianity was an abomination. He was to join none of those creeds or those sects, sects S E C T S. Which really means churches. Right. And that's that's the term that they used to use. And it's still an accurate term, it's just we don't use it very much. No, we don't we don't speak like that. Anymore. Yeah, true. But but uh, so he's saying that all of Christianity is an abomination and that and what Joseph Smith goes on to say is that God uh, told him through Jesus uh, that the, the truth was going to be restored through him, that, that the Mormon church is the only true church on the face of the earth. And so they've got the corner on truth. All of us Christians, we're, we're living in a partial truth. Well, what, what actually what he's saying is, is that, that God and Jesus Christ appeared to him and said that all other churches had left the face of the earth and had gone away Astray. from a, a Christianity and mm -hmm. had completely turned away from the true uh, gospel and that the gospel had been completely done away with and it needed to be restored and it needed to be restored through Joseph Smith. Right, exactly. So that was the foundation. Now, Joseph Fielding Smith, who was the sixth prophet of the Mormon church and was Joseph Smith's nephew from Nauvoo here, he, he had this to say about Mormons. This is a direct quote. Saints are the best people. We are, notwithstanding our weaknesses, the best people in the world. I do not say that boastingly, for I believe that this truth is evident to all who are willing to observe for themselves. We are morally clean in every way equal, and in many ways superior to any other people. The reason is that we have received the truth, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not to us a dead letter, something perhaps to be followed on the Sabbath day and forgotten on the six other days of the week, but our religion is an everyday religion. We are expected to live in accordance with the principles of truth every day of our lives, for these principles are just as true in the middle of the week as they are on the Sabbath day. Uh, well, the Mormons obviously for the last 34 years in Utah are not living their religion uh, during the work week because well, they are I, the scam central of the world. They are the rip-off central of the world, and they're ripping each other off as well as, in these stock frauds and other things, other people. But they're truly, I mean, 75% is uh, 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 let's of just Utah. go back. Let's just go back to the foundation. Okay? okay. Let's just go back to the foundation of the church. Okay. The foundation of the church is Joseph Smith. If Joseph Smith falls, the Mormon, the Mormon Church falls. Okay. What scam did Joseph Smith do? Seems to me that he was digging a well, and that he's digging away. He finds a stone, cleans it off, puts it in a hat, puts his hat over his face, and he's going around digging for money, and he's selling himself out as a scam artist to dig for money Clear for back people then. way back in the 1800s. So 1826, folks were, he was arrested and tried. He as a was glass arrested for, and tried. Yep. So from and 18, convicted. And convicted. So from 1826 to 2003, we still have scams. Yeah, we sure do. You know, folks, uh, Mormonism is all about image. Mm-hmm. The commercials that we all see on TV, and they and they're good. They're wonderfully done. They're very. They spend they're good money. They 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 hire an excellent firm to produce those TV commercials. They're well done. They uh, very professional, mm -hmm. but they're they're phony baloney. You know, Mormonism is kind of like. Uh, you know, it's all built on image, and it's all a facade. It's all an illusion. It's kind of like, like a, a a TV set in an old Western movie. 
you know, you got the cowpokes, you know, riding, riding down the road of the old dirt street there, you know, they're riding along and they got these big, you know, buildings on either side. You're having a good time with that, aren't you? Oh, I like that riding along. Just riding along, riding along. Well, they are. You know, the cowpokes are, you know, they're riding, I see, yeehaw. So they're riding along the, the, uh, the, the dirt street there and they got these, these big buildings on either side with the big false fronts on them. Well, but they don't look like false fronts with the TV camera going down the street. And then they get off their horse, they tie up to the hitching post, and they step into this, into the saloon or into the general store or whatever. And of course, the camera follows them. And then when they go into the store, of course, it's a store. They go into the saloon, it's just a saloon. But if you were on the TV set, when they step through that door, there's nothing there. This is big false front with two by fours back behind holding up these, these false fronted buildings. And, and, and that's, that's what Mormonism is. Yeah. It, they put this big image up that, that they have the truth and, and they are the restored church and God has given them this special information. They are the one true Mormon church, God. the Mormon God. The Mormon yeah, God. I, thank you for clarifying. It's very important but, to keep that but, straight. But then when you, when you get behind the scene, when you look behind Mormonism, it's a false front. Mm -hmm. It's a false building. It's, it's not for real. It's not true. Uh, and and it's, a, it's an illusion, and that's, that's really what it is. It's funny that you bring that up, because being born and raised in California, um, I did go on a lot of movie sets and things like that, and it's, and it's very shocking to find out that gun smoke is not exactly what you think gun smoke is when you get there. <laughs> um, it doesn't exist. It is just a false front. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, Mormonism is just that, what we've been talking about. It's, it's a false front. And once you get behind that illusion, uh, there's simply nothing behind it. It's an empty shell. And why mm -hmm. is that? It, it's really pretty simple to tell you the truth. It's very sad. <clears throat> behind every Christian religion, when you get behind the building fronts, you find a real building. Uh, and that building is Jesus Christ. And Him alone. And Him alone. He, Jesus Christ, is who Christianity is built upon but not in Mormonism. You see, Mormonism, unlike Christianity, uh, denies or distorts all of the fundamental teachings of historical Christianity. Mormonism has another Jesus, not the Jesus of the Bible. And if you don't have the Jesus of the Bible, then you have nothing. That is why when you get behind the building fronts of Mormonism, you see it's just a shell. There's nothing there. It's a facade. It's a false front. It's an illusion. Christianity is built on Jesus Christ. Mormonism is built on Joseph Smith. Exactly. And so, you know, Mormonism claims that they're the only true church on the face of the earth. And if that's true, then they should be truly different from everybody else. They are truly different. From and, they, and that is a fact. They are truly different. You know, but Utah has a, a terrible reputation. And, and we're going to show you that right now. Utah is 75% Mormon, mm -hmm. three out of four people in Utah are Mormons, and since they have the only truth, all of us Christians, we're in, we're in a false religion and we don't have the truth. They have the truth. They have the solid rock. Mm -hmm. Well, if that was true, then, then Utah should be truly different, remarkably different from any mm -hmm. other state. Now, this is, a, this is a slide we use in our seminars when we go to churches and do seminars about Mormonism. And I'm going to put it up on the, on the screen for you now. This is how Utah measures up. This is how Utah shapes up. And I see up on the screen we're going in with number one. It is number one in the nation in antidepressant drug use. Well, that's, and they blow everybody else away. Even in, California. Totally and completely. They are number one in bankruptcy. Just absolutely, again, smoking everybody. Uh, they are number four in teenage suicide. Oh my goodness. How could, how could the, 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 the place that has the truth be so high in, in suicide? And, and overall, in complete suicide, they're number nine because Mormon uh, women commit a very, very high uh, uh, precedence of suicide in Mormon women. The divorce rate is higher than the national average. Well, how can that be? These commercials, that you know, they have it all together, and families are forever, and, and they promote this thing about, you know, about uh, uh, being married to Mormon temple, but their divorce rate's higher than the national average. Across the U.S., violence against women is declining, but not in Utah. In Utah, it is increasing. And 
In the year 2000, it was the worst year on record for shaken baby deaths. And now we can add to that, right out of the paper <coughs> last month in, in January, or two months ago when you see this, in, in January of, of 2003, they are now number one in scams. And then they have held that position for quite a while, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact. But they are scam central. Uh, Mormonism, you know, if, you, if they had the truth, and three out of four people in Utah have the truth, and all the rest of us are, are in this pool of falsehoods, then they... Abominations then, to God, uh, yeah, of the Bible. Then, then we should be, you know, Utah should be truly different. And it, and, is, they are and it is truly different. Look at those stats. No other state racks up those kind of statistics like that except Utah. Right. And why? Because they don't have Jesus behind them. Yeah. Think of how you and I were before we had Jesus in our life. I wasn't that great a guy. I'll tell you that for sure. Um, and none of us were. Without Jesus, He's our righteousness. Without Him in our life, then we don't have any baseline. We're going on our own good. And what does the Bible say about our own good? Isaiah 64, 6. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Right. So when we try and do it in our own strength, we fail miserably. Well, that's why Utah fails miserably. Because the Mormon church does not have Jesus as its underlying baseline. So they're relying on their own goodness, their own righteousness, and they're failing uh, uh, miserably. Uh, you know, Utah is, is the way that it is, has all of those dubious distinctions we just saw, those number ones that are atrocious. Why? Because the Mormon church has another Jesus. They don't have the Jesus of the Bible, and so they have nothing. And that's, that's sad. You know, it really is sad. So when you see those, you know, those commercials on TV are great. They're wonderful. They're, you know, families are forever, and and all these good things that they espouse. But, but it's a facade. It's not for real. No. The, the Mormon church is not the only true church on the face of the earth. In fact, they are a false religion. Because just as Paul says in the, in the chapter 1 of Galatians, in, in verses 7 through 12, I think it is, he talks about the Galatians chasing after another religion, another gospel, not the one he taught. And that's what the Mormon church is. They're chasing after another religion, another gospel, not the gospel of Christianity. Well, we're just down to 10 seconds. The, the object of this show is to peel away some of that falsehood that the Mormon church has it together. Lord bless you. See you next week.